In this video, I will prove that the exponential function can be written as a power series. It's Maclaurin series. This is an example of how to prove that a function is analytic using Lagrange's remainder theorem. First, let's fix the notation. I'm looking at the function, I'm going to call it f, f of x equal e to the x, and I'm looking at the power series center at a equals 0. We know, since this function is the infinity, that e to the x can always be written as the nth Taylor polynomial plus the nth remainder. The nth Taylor polynomial, Pn, has this form. It's the sum from k equals 0 to n of x to the k over k factorial. I had already computed this in a previous video. I will put a link in the description. And the nth remainder is simply the difference between the function and the Taylor polynomial. Then with this notation, my goal in this video is to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth remainder is zero. Now the exponential is the nth polynomial plus the remainder. Since the limit of the remainders is zero, when I take the limit as n approaches infinity of the polynomials, this will imply that the exponential is equal to the Maclaurin series. So e to the x equals sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k over k factorial. Or here are the first few terms. So to prove the exponential equals its Maclaurin series, all I have to prove is that the remainders approach 0 as n goes to infinity. Let's write down the proof. First, I'm going to fix a real number x. And now for this value of x, I have to prove the remainders go to 0. And my tool is going to be Lagrange remainder theorem. I'm going to use it for the exponential function at 0. I explained this theorem in the previous video. I will add a link in the description. But that is the tool we always use to prove a function is analytic this way. If I use this theorem, I can conclude that there exists a number xi between 0 and x that allows me to write an explicit formula for the remainder. The remainder is equal to the n plus first derivative of the function xi over n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1. Luckily, in this case, computing the derivatives of the functions is easy. The first derivative of the exponential is itself, therefore all the derivatives of the exponential are the same. So the n plus first derivative of xi is simply e to the xi. And now this looks easy. All I have to do is compute the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression of e to the xi x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Perhaps I can factor out e to the xi and I have an easy limit. But wait, I cannot really do this. For the purpose of the limit, n is the variable and x is a constant. However, xi is not a constant because xi depends on x and n. The fact that it depends on x is not a problem, but it depends on n. For every value of n, it is a different use of Lagrange remainder theorem. So I can't quite do that. I have to do one more step. Unfortunately, I don't know what xi is. All I know is that it is between 0 and x. So the best thing to do is to try to bound the expression that depends on xi. For simplicity, I'm going to separate two cases, when x is greater than 0 and when x is less than 0. When x equals 0, there is nothing to do. This is just to simplify the algebra. So when x is greater than 0, xi is between 0 and x. And therefore, here is again the expression I have for the remainder, e to the xi x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Since the exponential function is increasing, we know e to the xi is smaller than e to the x. So the remainder is less than or equal than e to the x, which now, yes, is a constant, times x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. I know the limit of that part. From the big theorem, x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial goes to 0, as n goes to infinity. And therefore, from the squeeze theorem, I can conclude that the remainder goes to 0, because it's sandwiched between 0 and a constant times something that goes to 0. That's it. On the other hand, when x is negative, I leave that as an exercise. It's a very, very similar argument. So try to reproduce the argument. It's a slightly different bound, but the same argument. And that's it. That completes the proof. I have proven that e to the x equals its Maclaurin series. Any proof of this kind will normally go the same way. First, you need to know what the Maclaurin series or the Taylor series is, and then use Lagrange remainder theorem, and there's always a similar bound. As an exercise to practice this, I invite you to try to use a very similar argument to prove that sine of x is also analytic and can be written as its Maclaurin series.